Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your fractions unit lesson on adding and subtracting fractions. So by the end of this video, you are going to be able to add and subtract like and unlike fractions. There are a few new vocabulary words, so make sure that you are ready to write those down and connect them to what you're learning. Like fractions. Like fractions are fractions that have a common denominator. So fractions with a common denominator, meaning they have the same denominator. Getting ahead of myself. So for example, two-thirds and one-third are like fractions. Four-fifths and three-fifths are like fractions. They have the same denominator. What you're going to learn and what you're going to practice today is that when you add and subtract like fractions, you simply just add the numerators and you leave them over the denominator. So you leave the denominator alone. Because what the numerator and the denominator, remember your teachers from North Dakota, represent are your part out of a specific whole. So for example, we need to have them out of the same whole number, the same denominator, to be able to add them correctly. So say the Wacka House has a whole pizza cut into, that's one whole, and this one whole pizza is cut into eight pieces. Well, say I come along and I eat two pieces of pizza. Miss J comes along and eats these two pieces of pizza. Mr. Isles comes along and eats this one piece of pizza. Mr. Stry comes along and eats these two pieces of pizza, two of the eight. Then that leaves one more piece for Miss Pugmire. So therefore, we see that out of the eight, I had two, J had two, Isles had one, Stry had two, and Pugmire had one. So all together, if we add those together, we all together ate eight out of the eight pieces. We ate one whole pizza. Okay? So thinking part out of whole. So if you want to add and subtract like fractions, there's some visuals here to help you see that just like I gave you. So what you do is you simply write them. This was out of the book. I'm going to rewrite it. It's really like I'm adding my numerators. So I'm doing 5 plus 2 out of 9, which is 7 out of 9. You can see that there. 5 out of the whole, this whole thing is 9, the whole, and 7 of them are consumed. Same thing for subtraction. I have 9 tenths, and I'm taking away one of the tenths. So this whole thing is 10. I have 9 of them, and I take out 1. That's 9 minus 1, which says I have 8 tenths. If that's in simplest form, though, Remember, going back to that, I find a common factor that 8 and 10 have. Since 8 and 10 are both even, they're both divisible by 2. So 8 tenths is the same as 4 fifths. So now you try, and then come back and see how you did, if you're ready. So 1 6 plus 3 6, that's really the same as 1 plus 3 out of the 6, which is 4 6, but in simplest form, those both share a factor of 2, so it's 2 thirds. 3 7 minus 1, just using the numerators, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 and 7 share a greatest common factor of 1, so it's already simplified. Now going into unlike fractions, a least common denominator, that refers back to our least common multiple conversation. If I have a denominator, if I have a fraction of one-third and I'm trying to add it to two-fifths, I need my denominators to be the same. I need them to be common. Same denominators, like. And what I have to do is change them. Really, I find the least common multiple of the denominator. So I'm looking for three and 5, well, their least common multiple is 15. So I multiply this one by 3 and this one by 5 so that then I have equivalent fractions of 5 fifteenths plus 6 fifteenths. So they're equivalent fractions, but now they have a common denominator. So unlike fractions are fractions that have 
not the same denominator. So for example, one third and two fifths are unlike because their denominators are different. So to add unlike fractions, we need to, again, change them to have a least common denominator. Least common denominator is similar to least common multiple. It's the least common multiple of the denominators. What's really important, like we talked about before, is estimating your answer before you do it. So we're going to estimate this one-half is close to one-half. One-sixth is not very much. It's closer to zero. So our answer should be close to one-half, but a little bit more, obviously, because we're adding more than zero. So we need to find the least common multiple of two and six. Well, since two is prime and six is not, but six is even, two does multiply to six, so six is our least common multiple. So what I do is I change one half by a factor of three here, and it's the same as three six. So then I'm able to add three six to one six, because now they are like, they have the same denominator, and I add the numerators, for 4, 6. In simplest form, now I divide both by 2, it's the same as 2 thirds. So I checked 2 thirds is slightly more than 1 half, like we said, so my answer is reasonable. And here is a visual for those of you that need to see that. We just simply broke this 1 half into 6. So, Renaming fractions. To rename fractions, multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the original by the same number. By doing so, the rename fraction has the same value. So this is how we create equivalent review word fractions. All right, so we want to be subtracting unlike fractions here. 11 twelfths minus 3 eighths in simplest form. First, we're going to estimate. 11 twelfths is close to 1, 3 eighths, 4 eighths would be 1 half, so that's close to 1 half. So using those estimations, our answer should be close to 1 half. So here in this little segment, what they're talking about is they used least common multiples in prime factorization to show what the least common multiple of 12 and 8 would be. So 12's primes are 2 squared times 3, 8's primes are 2 to the third. Remembering we're finding a least common multiple, in this case four, a least common denominator, we take each number that comes up to the highest power, so we're really multiplying eight times three, which is 24. So that means 24 is the smallest number both 12 and eight multiply to. So what you see here is how do we do that? Well, I get 12 to 24 by multiplying by two, and I get eight to 24 by multiplying by three. So we're gonna take 11 twelfths and multiply the whole thing by 2 over 2. And I'm going to take 3 eighths and multiply that whole thing by 3 over 3. So what I'm really working with is 22 24 minus 9 24 ths. So now that I have a common denominator, I just have to worry about my numerators. and I get 13 24ths. Well, 12 out of 24 is 1 half, so this is slightly more than 1 half, like we said, so it's reasonable. Go ahead and give these ones a try and come back and check in. I'm going to kind of whip through them. So I look for a least common denominator of 9 and 3. 3 is a factor of 9, so I can multiply this one to get to 9 by doing 3 over 3. So I rewrite them as 8 ninths minus 6 ninths. Subtract my numerators of the like fractions and I get 2 ninths. 6 and 8. Even if sometimes people don't do the least common denominator, but you can do a denominator. I know they both go to 24. So to change that one, 5 6 needs to be multiplied by 4 over 4. 3 eighths needs to be multiplied by 3 over 3. So we're dealing with 20 24 minus 9 24 Subtract my numerators for 11 24 They share greatest common factor of 1, 
so it's simplified. And adding one, 4 can go to 8, so I only have to change one of my fractions. That's always nice. And I get 7 eighths plus 6 eighths. Add my numerators. 4, 13 eighths. Remember now this is an improper fraction, so I need to change it to a simplest form. So I say 8 goes into 13 one whole time. 13 minus 8 is 5, so 5 of the eighths are left over. Okay, a couple word problems here. It's going to be helpful for you to stay engaged and listen to the language because that's kind of the toughest part for some of us. So we see fractions a lot when we're looking at surveys. So in this survey, students were asked about what they would choose for a healthy lunch. The results are shown here. So when we read this, what fraction more of the students chose salad rather than a deli? So again, this is where we're comparing something to another and looking for how many more so what fraction more suggests subtraction? So what we're trying to subtract is our salads. We're taking the deli sandwiches. How many more salads were there than deli sandwiches? So we're taking deli sandwiches away from salads. They do not have common denominators, so we need to change them. Both 20 and 25 go into 100. So I'm going to multiply this one by a factor of 5 over 5 and this one by 4 over 4. So what I end up with then is 45 out of 100 minus 12 out of 100. Subtract my numerators. So and you can line them up this way if that's easier for you for visually. So I get 33 hundredths. What fraction of students chose pizza or chicken nuggets? Pizza or chicken nuggets, this would mean that we're going to be adding those together because we're wondering how many total pizza or chicken nuggets. So for pizza, it was 3 twentieths plus 1 tenth. Least common multiple of 10 and 20 is 20. So we just change that one by 2. So I have 3 twentieths plus 2 twentieths. So the fractions of students that chose them were 5 out of 20 which simplifies, they share a factor of 5, to 1 out of every 4 students. Remember, it's the ratio, you can read it like that. Last one, what fraction more if students chose a deli sandwich rather than a burger? So remember that what fraction more rather than tells us we're going to be subtracting. So we look up here, deli sandwich is 3 25ths. Burger and fries is one-tenth. Their least common multiple is going to be 50, so I change this by 2, this one by 5, for 6 fiftieths minus 5 fiftieths, which is 1 in every 50 students chose that more. So ladies and gentlemen, last thing, um, these are steps that you can write down in your notes so that you can kind of remember them. When you're adding, subtracting fractions, rewrite the fractions to have the same denominator. And you can do that by using the least common multiple of the denominators, which is called the least common denominator. Then you'll just add or subtract the numerators, you'll keep the denominator the same, and you will write the sum or difference in simplest form. Having those steps done will be helpful. You rock, rewatch where you need to, have good notes, write down questions, be your best self. We'll see you soon.